Paulo missed three tackles, made 14. Kikau missed nine, made 33. Papa Lee with 101 Supercoach points. Reed with 93. Two other Parramatta players before you got to Liam Martin on 82 points from Penrith. Uh, Obviously, there's a couple of problems I've already mentioned. Uh, Moses out and Cleary out for the next four or five weeks. Well, three, three to four for Moses and five weeks for Cleary. It's going to have both sides scrambling for the next couple of weeks, I would imagine. Both teams seem to come out with the real strong intent in this game and they, you know, well, they were fired up. They were looking to do some damage to the other team, um, looking to dominate. Parramatta sort of owned the first five, five minutes or so and they were camped on the Panthers line and just couldn't get through. They got a couple of repeat sets and then turned the ball back to Penrith and Penrith just seemed to go straight down the other end, get a, get a six again and then score. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And again, the Parramatta got the ball and just ran straight up Penrith's end and managed to, and replied pretty quickly through Papali, who was in beast mode for the majority of this game. He had a tremendous performance, which he seems to put in every two or three weeks for this Parramatta side. They'd be a completely different side without him. <laughs> I would imagine. Um, Hopefully, we find out. If we, we'll find out next year, I'm mm. imagining. Uh, if I might say. Yeah. Parramatta just um, seemed to then sort of put the screws on Penrith once they scored that first try and um, played field position. They kicked early with 40 20, um, got back down there, scored again. And then Obviously, the Cleary incident sort of threw everything out of the window. Penrith looked like they were they were trying to do the same thing back to Parramatta, play a bit of field position, turn them around and try to win that field position battle. And then I said to the missus as soon as Cleary went off, which I think was what, about 20-something minutes in, I was like, well, this is over. You can't win this game with 12 players. Mm. Um, not for 60 minutes. It's just not going to happen. And um, proved, proved the case. I think Penrith were pretty shell-shocked, obviously, for – you said you saw the a lot of damage happen in that next 10, 15 minutes after Cleary got sent off. I think Penrith were just yeah. rattled and scrambling and they had no idea what was going on. Obviously, it gave Parramatta a massive lift and they were they just seemed to be pouring through the middle of the field. If it wasn't Reed going from dummy half, it was Papa Lee breaking open that right hand edge or Sean Lane on the left hand edge. And yeah, they they absolutely put Penrith to the sword for the next 20 minutes to finish off that first half. Um Mahoney was fantastic out of dummy half. Um, his running game really came to the fore, which was good, and he was picking up players along the way as well and put, you know, putting them through holes, which just destroyed the middle of the field there for Penrith. Second half, as you mentioned, I think Parramatta decided that they were just going to defend their way through, try and not get hurt, just play field position, and you know, we, we might finish, score a try or two. To Penrith's credit, you have to give them kudos because they really lift lifted up their intensity in that second half. And they came out with obviously a point to prove that they weren't going to be walked over in the second half. And they were fighting just as physically hard as they have for pretty much every other game they've played this year. They were in Parramatta's face. They were aggressive. And um, that aggressive defence and line speed was the reason that Parramatta sort of, I think it it looked like they were playing a little bit. Obviously, they were playing a little bit um, less attacking than they could have, but I think a lot of it came down to the way Penrith were just putting the pressure, pouring the pressure on them as well. So they sort of forced their hand to take a back seat rather than try to attack too much. Um, fantastic effort for Penrith to win that second half. Um, was it whatever it was, 6-4? But um, what, does that take a bit out of, take an edge off them again for next week when they line up against... Um, I don't even remember who playing this week, Canberra. So that is such an interesting I dare game. say that drags a bit of energy out of them, the back end, the, the amount of effort they put into that second half. So, yeah. But we'll see. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I know they'll down a play, but it also, like you said, fantastic to keep them to six, but it also, um, this sounds like a dumb thing to say out loud, but if Clear is on the field, I think there's plenty of points in that second half too. They, they missed an attacking. Any attacking point, really, at times. And, yeah, um, realistically. And um, I don't see trying to be that coming. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show, but... yeah. Yo got, I think I think once they worked out, they could just shut Yo down. That was it. Yeah. Before I, I, the, Isaiah. It was really only the one point of attack, and they focused in on him. Um, Edward just popping up and sort of making half breaks here and there, but there's only so much you can do on your own. Um, RCG and Paulo were okay in the middle, but they were outshone, I thought, by Madison. Um, and then you go to uh, 
Brown, uh, Sean Lane and Papali, as I mentioned, they were they were the best forwards on the field by a fair way. Look, Fish, Leota, and Kickow were okay. Kickow missed a few more tackles. Than I know he normally misses four or five, but he got up near ten in this one, and um, mm -hmm. he looked a little unsure of what he was doing out there at times. To be honest, um, I thought Yo and Edwards were, were really good, and Targo and I'd say Targo O'Sullivan. You throw in Appy and Martin, they were probably the best four players for Penrith. Um, Appy and, and Liam Martin, probably the better two out of that lot. I mentioned Brown. Uh, I thought Dylan Brown had a really good game as well. I thought he probably was um, better than Moses at the back end of this game. And yeah, Papa Lee, Lane, were the best two players on the field. Oliver? Well, I think it was really smart of Parramatta to shut down Isaiah as soon as they could when clear ran off because as you brought up his main point of attack and I feel like it's become sort of a learned thing now for teams when clear is out because he was obviously out at the start of the season and you go back and watch those games even though he was playing lock and even though um, Sean O'Sullivan was rightly praised for having a good game in those contests uh, Isaiah Yeo was well and truly that main point of attack for Penrith and sort of ended up playing like a, a bit of a halfback just sort of to cover O'Sullivan so it's actually you know, commendable that Parramatta picked up on that. Um, and as soon as Cleary went, went off, they knew exactly who to target uh, and who to shut down there. But uh, if Parramatta kept it up in the second half, I think they probably could have got close to 50. I understand sort of the conservative nature in the second half when Penrith sort of started coming at them, but I thought they probably could have picked it up a bit and sort of went for it a, a little bit more because in that first half, they were near unstoppable. It's as if Penrith just waved the white flag and then at half time probably realised they need to show a bit of pride and actually try to stick in this game as much as they could because there was a certain, like, definitely before and after half time, there was a noticeable shift in the effort it seemed Penrith was putting in. But, I mean, uh, I've, I've got it here. When 11 of your starting 13 players are running for at least 100 metres, you know, you're probably not going to lose a game. The, the, the two that didn't, Tom Uppercheck and Reed Marnie, who was giving great service out of hooker. So just about, I wouldn't say perfect, but, great performances all around for Parramatta and it was just sort of an onslaught and a wave after wave. And I, I was a little bit disappointed that they actually didn't kick on with it in the second half as much. But again, it's, it sort of goes hand in hand. I think Parramatta probably pulled the brake a little bit and Penrith's effort was sort of coming back there in that second half. Yeah, there's a, there would have been a real psychological thing to put 50 on them and just go, we've got your number regardless of situation. And the age old adage about Conceding fifty, um, yeah. Like, are we understating Parramatta a little bit here, or it was what it was? No, I think so. They were fantastic for the first forty minutes. They could have gone on. Um, there was still, obviously, you saw Moses wringing his hands out, and, um, sort of didn't get as involved as he possibly could. Yeah, uh, towards the back end of the game, and they were definitely going through the motions in that last sort of twenty to thirty minutes of the game. Um, yeah, yeah. Like as Ollie said, I think they could have really carved them apart if they wanted to, but I think they just thought, you know, the job's done. We'll just get through till next week and go go from there. Um, it, it was obviously one of their better performances for probably close to two months, realistically, because they, they've been pretty poor for six weeks, and it was something that they really needed. But um, they need to back it up this week and the week mm -hmm. after. Like they need to start putting two and three games together before you can really start praising them too much. I think. How are we looking? But they were, yeah, they, they were on top of Penrith. And even if Cleary stays on the field, I think they possibly still eke out a win at the back end of the game. But it's it's all hypothetical from yeah, I the think 20 so minutes too. on. I think they look great, yeah, leading up to that. Um, Do, do we give Reed three here? I had Papa Lee with three. I yeah. just thought that every time they needed him, they went there and he went, he was the one that was busting them open on that edge. Um, I had Reed for two, and then it was either Appy. Dylan Brown or Lane for the one. I'd probably go with Brown. I would have gone with Sean Lane, so whatever. <laughs> I'll um, you decide. <laughs> I'll go with Lane. 